Um, all right, um, I'm sitting or I'm zooming here with uh, Zach, uh, co-owner and head brewer at Ramshackle. You got it. All right. Um, and if you have, if you don't know, uh, Ramshackle is located in Jonesville. And people have asked me when I, when I told them I've been there, um, I always tell them it's about, what, 20 miles south of Albion off of 94? Yeah, roughly. Or, roughly. or what we always say is right smack dab in between Chicago and Detroit. <laughs> that, that's the halfway point? It's roughly the halfway point. Well, actually, the day I, I found you or the day I stopped in um, in November, I was coming back from, it wasn't Chicago, but I was in, uh, I was at Three Floyd. So it ended up being about the halfway point. So that right kind of makes sense, yeah. Um, so you guys, you're less than a year open. Your uh, July of 19 is when you opened your doors, correct? Correct. And uh, what is the, I always like hearing the origin stories of brewery. So were you a home brewer? Did you have a particular beer that just kind of like, man, I got to start making some of this? What What's a ramshackle story? Uh, well, first off, I've always fell in love with, you know, the craft beers. And before I was 21, it was the european beers coming over yeah getting a taste of what real beer was and started brewing off and on and then about 10 years ago was all grain brewing right away just home brewing every single weekend and everybody started coming around and next thing you know you know the homemade equipment and everyone going boy what kind of a ramshackle operation do you have going on ah okay the name stuck because me and our partner Joe, we made all of our equipment from hand. Oh, really? Yep, out of whatever we could find. Okay. And where were you buying your ingredients back then? I mean, was there a, a I don't know, are you originally from the Jonesville area or uh, were there uh, supply stores back then, like 10 years ago around there? Um, mostly it was Adventures in Home Brewing in okay. Ann Arbor. And then the Dark Horse, uh, and Marshall had a has a general store with right. some some support that way. And what was your go to beer? What what did you produce a lot of? Uh, right away, it's our Kentucky Common. I mean, that was the one that we started brewing and trying to master. And now that's our number one beer at the brewery. We call it Push Mower. Okay, which is what? What kind of beer is it? It's a Kentucky Common. Okay. It's a best way to describe it is a rye roasted cream ale nice that's one i didn't have in and you had six on tap when i was there but i had three others i that was up there but that was that was one that i did have um i started off with your english drizzle when i was in yep which was really good and then um you had a uh, because it was november you were uh, still tapping your uh marzen your harvest uh, ale oh yes yep that one's been a, that was a big favorite and then the third one was, um, it was an experiment tap you guys have. Do you always have an experiment tap on? Yes. Okay. Yes. I always have one experiment, one seasonal, and then just a, what we call a no holds barred pints for a purpose tap. Okay. I, I do want to get to that. The, uh, the experiment tap that time was the Norwegian farmhouse. Oh yeah. That was a real good one. I really liked that. Yeah. Um, and you said, you, you called it taps with a purpose? Yep, pints for a purpose. Pints tap. for a purpose. Um, yep. What our sixth tap? We pick a local nonprofit every month, and we donate proceeds to that. If patrons want to donate to that directly, they we have that option. Okay, cool. Um, I think the the thing that stood out for me the most, besides the beer, obviously, and talking uh, to you, um, was the story of the actual facility and what it was before it was a brewery, which I love going to places, whether they're no, uh, new or old, and figuring out what it was. And yours was an alley, which was the first I've ever heard of. Yeah, well, we, we tried to be the first at doing something, I guess. <laughs> and so that's what it was. There was two buildings with, what, about 16 feet in between them? Yeah, and that's what it was. It was a, um urban infill project is what our architect was calling it. Okay. And so you're definitely, so 16 feet wide and about 95 100 feet long? Uh, 90, 97, I think it was. Okay. It totaled out. <laughs> and, I it mean, was that uh, extra two feet. <laughs> <laughs> so it works perfect, though. I mean, you got a walk-in area. you got your bar that runs long ways. 
and you, um, I don't know, I wasn't there uh, obviously in the winter, but or in the summer, you have a big garage door that opens up and you were talking about having outdoor seating. Yeah, we're working with the state on that one still. Okay. Because it's right, we're right on US 12, which is a, a um, federal highway still. We've got to go through MDA and then the federal um, Department of Transportation to allow all this. Okay. And then the, uh, the inside, the interior, you hired some, or I don't know if hired is the right word, but um, contracted some local artists. Yes. Um, we have seven local artists that donated their time. And then as a payment for, you know, a thank you for us, we um, were allowing each one of the artists to design a pint glass and we're selling that and giving all the proceeds to that local artist. Oh, really cool. Um, you you want to share some of their names? Um, I don't have a list right okay. now. I know no, a no couple worries. of them. <laughs> Put you on the spot. Yeah. So a lot of the breweries that I'm going to now, um, including yours, they, obviously, you, we just talked before we started recording you, that you're you're um, you're getting a lot of you know the community, local community, but you're getting a lot of travelers even during the pandemic um, from around the state, and I'm assuming from Ohio and Indiana to come in and and pick up some of your beers. But did you open more as a community base, and that's what you really wanted to do was you know along with Jonesville, the surrounding communities, just kind of supply beer for them. That was our original goal. Um, one of our our niches so to speak is we were the first 47 percent community funded business according to um michigan where is it mile it's the michigan invest local exemption okay I actually sold 47 percent of our company to local investors for crowd crowds equity-based crowdfunding cool and that's how we got our start and we our goal was just Keep it in Hill, Hillsdale, Jonesville, the surrounding communities, 30 minutes or 30 miles away is our okay. distribution. Cool. Um, and when you walk in, you have a, a really large uh, wall that is dedicated to Beer It Forward. So there's a bunch of brightly colored post-its that, you know, a lot of breweries are doing across the state, but yours was one of the largest I've seen. I don't know, there was probably over 100, maybe 120 on there when I was there with um, and if people don't know, the Beer It Forward, someone comes in, pays for a pint, will write something on a post-it and pretty much put it on the board. And when someone comes in, they can kind of go through those. And if they fit the the description, that be, uh, they got a pint paid for them? Yes. Yeah, we average about 200 to 250 of wow. the Beer It Forwards. Wow. Every, every, about every week, it, it rotates through. Okay, so then my, my question then is, uh, has the bagpiper picked up his yet or hers yet? No, we have not had a bagpiper. So anybody listening, <laughs> there is a beer for a bagpiper on the wall. And how long do they have to play when they come in? One song? Oh, I don't care. If they want to <laughs> jam out, they can jam out. We're... <laughs> um, I, I want to touch base. I mean, we'll, we'll get to your normal hours, but... Um, during the shutdown, obviously, it's, it can't be that easy for a brewery that's about, I would guess, seven or eight months old at the time when the shutdown happened. Um, how have you guys been dealing with it? Have you changed your, your model? Obviously, carry out. You're not having people come in and sit at the bar, but um, have you still seen the same type of traffic or close to as you did beforehand? Well, we, we bought an October canner. Shout out to October. Those canning <laughs> can seamers are awesome. Oh, really? Okay. Uh, we, oh yeah, they're great. Easy to use, easy to set up. Um, so, we bought one of those in October actually, and we replaced all of our growler sales with a 16 ounce pint can. Nice. And it's, we're, it's the same price as a pint at the, at the bar. You can get a can to go at the same price. It's not that big a deal for us. So with that, we started canning off you know, complete runs of our beer, pre-labeled everything, ready to go. And now what we do is we have a garage open. You come right up. There's minimal contact with anybody. And if you want to stay in your car, we'll run it right there. We're 10 steps from the road too. Okay, cool. Um, our, our sales, we're, we're at about 75% where we were, which to me, I'm not complaining at all. All right, yeah. Um, and you said, we, we, before we started recording, you said a lot of it, the people that are coming in for carryout 
have been mostly the local community, um, but you have seen some people come in, some travelers from across the state or um, far away in Michigan and some other states that are just kind of traveling today and picking up some beers other places? Oh yeah, and I will say that the folks that are from out of state or you know out of the area, they give us a call and they say, hey, we're not from the area, can you just run this, run the card over the phone and drop it off in our car? I mean, okay. that's that's been awesome for them to let us know that, hey, we're not from the area, so. Sure, um, I wanna to touch on some of the beers. I mean, um, what do you enjoy? I mean, you, you, you have, you, is it usually six beers on tap normally then? Yeah, we always have six beers. Okay. We don't have the space for anything more sure. than that. Sure. Um, are you a lot during this pandemic now? Are you brewing? Do you find yourself brewing more with a little bit more downtime, being able to kind of stock up for the summer season, or what's your uh, what's your schedule like now as a brewer? Uh, right now, I'm I'm actually still brewing our same same capacity. No, I'm just keeping okay. the tanks full, move, moving different sure. beers. Um, Is, it helps that we can off a run too. We sure, yeah. Um, you are a, you don't have a food menu, but you're food friendly. You have a lot of local places that people can order from and they, they can either carry in or the uh, places will deliver to you. Yes. Yes. That's one of the things. Our art is beer and across the street and next door, we have two great restaurants and a pizza place down, like literally two blocks down. Okay. That's their art. So we wanted to let everybody know, Hey, you know, share our art with everybody else. Cool. Um, you're, um, when we do reopen and you're able to have people in your dog friendly brewery. Oh yeah. We're pet friendly. We even had a hamster and a little ball rolling around one day. Get out. <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> I might know my, uh, my next beer at forward when I'm there. Uh, I might put an anaconda on one of those stickers and wait to see when, when they come in. Oh, my wife will flip out. She does not oh. like steaks. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Um, one thing I like to do, obviously traveling as much as I do, I always like to put and kind of build brewery tours. And when I think of you guys, um, obviously you're about, what, six miles uh, north of Hillsdale. So Hillsdale would probably be your closest other brewery to you. But yep. you also have Albion, um, the three breweries in Jackson. You turned me on to uh, Meckley's when I was in there. You said you have, if you're passing by, you definitely have to stop. Yeah, they're great guys. That was a great recommendation. I like them a lot. Um, but there are awesome. quite a few. I liked it. Yeah, there's, uh, there's quite a few in the south central part of Michigan that you can kind of do a little day trip or a two-day trip around you guys, correct? Oh, yeah. There's, there's a lot around us. And honestly, south central Michigan does not really get a lot of recognition. It's a lot of farmland, but there's a lot of beautiful lakes, great places sure. to just come visit. Yeah, I mean, I driving through, I, road trips are my thing. And when I was heading back that day, and I, I took 12 all the way from, I don't know where I, I picked it up on, but it took me right into Jonesville. And it was obviously a stop on my list that day, but um, there are quite a few that you can, someone can build their own little brewery tour and just kind of hit maybe four or five on the same day. Oh yeah, definitely. We have, we have a lot of that when we were open, we have a lot of people that are um, plotting it out between, you know, Indiana, Ohio, and Michigan. Yeah, um, I don't know if you've ever been, but one south of you, I would guess it's probably about 45 minutes. Um, I always recommend to people, if they, it's called Father John's in oh, Byron, Byron Ohio. Awesome. It's, it's insane, right? It's creepy. Just the ambiance is awesome. It is. Uh, we went there and they were actually, um, if no one's been, it's, it's still in a functioning church, but it's in the, the bottom level, I guess you would call it. Because when I walked in, there was a choir practicing upstairs. And then uh, you walk down and there's a, a table that's hanging from the ceiling with plexiglass floors underneath. And I guess you would call them catacombs. I don't know what they, um, but there was a plexiglass floor underneath that table that was hanging. Oh, you got to sit in that, that one. We've always got to sit in the main dining area. Well, I didn't get to sit. I, they they kind of gave us a tour, but the, the, time, the dining area has that, what, uh, 30 foot long kind of medieval table. That was pretty with sweet. With a big sword in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> but, and uh, the inside's great, but they also have one of the nicer beer garden, gardens outside also. Yes, they, 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 they do a really good job there. Yeah. From their so, yeah. food to their beer. I didn't, I didn't plan on highlighting an Ohio brewery in this podcast, but uh, they are definitely a, uh, a stop to go to if you haven't been. And their beer is right, uh, really good too. Yeah, they're, they're a neighbor of ours. I mean, 
the Jones, the salt, this area, we're neighbors. Cool. Have you, uh, speaking of neighbors, have you done any collaborations with local breweries? Not yet. Uh, we've been just really focusing on getting our, all of our old homebrew recipes up to date, troubleshooting, improving on everything. Cool. Um, when this uh, pandemic and shutdown kind of eases up and we're able to get out, what are your normal hours at the brewery? Our normal hours mon are Monday through are Monday through Thursday, um, four to ten. Okay. And then um, Sat Friday we stay open till eleven, four to eleven, and Saturdays noon to eleven. Okay. And um, people can find you. I know you do a lot of posting on Instagram and and Facebook. Yep, my wife, uh, wife's in charge of the social media side of it. Jesse does a great, great job doing that. Um, we got all the social media aspects and then our website, ramshacklebrewing.com. Cool. Um, you guys, you host bands also though on uh, Fridays and Saturdays, am I, am I mistaken? Have you had bands in? We, we had a one-man band once. Okay. And then we had... Um, I think I saw that post. St. Joe Jack. Yep. We, uh, we're just trying it out. You know, we cool. got our live music permits and all that. So we, we're just trying it out. Well, I, I do want to thank you a lot. This is uh, my first Zoom podcast, and I wanted to highlight um, some place that I guess wouldn't be right off the top of people's or the tip of their tongue or the top of their head. I mean, I really enjoyed my stop when I came in. Not only were you guys super friendly and easy to talk to, your beers were on point, and I really enjoyed my stop. Awesome. I'm glad you enjoyed it. That, that, right. that means a lot, man. So Jonesville, Michigan, uh, stop in and say hi to uh, Zach. And um, I guess that's it for now. I want to thanks again, Jack. I'll be in as soon as possible. As soon as the doors open, uh, I'll be one of your first customers, I promise. Awesome. There might be All a right, beer man. forward for you. You never know. All right. Sounds good. Thanks a lot, buddy. Cheers. See ya. Have a great day. You too. Cheers. Cheers. No, I just got to figure out how to end this. Ha, 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 ha.